sponsored in part by the law offices of Young Woldridge, San Joaquin Community Hospital, Hydrogen Energy California, and Chevron. And now here's your host, Cindy Pollard, President and CEO of the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce. Good morning, and thank you so much for joining us today on Strictly Business. Today, we're going to wrap up our month-long series on New Year's resolutions for your business. We're going to be joined by Jeff Pickering from the Kern Community Foundation to discuss corporate giving and how your company can start a corporate or employee giving program. Later in the show, we'll have Adam Alvidres with Chevron, who's going to talk about corporate social responsibility. Now, that's a company that's doing it well and doing it right. And he's going to talk about the importance of giving back to your community. But first, let's take an opening glance at some news you can use. The SBA is providing economic injury disaster loans to small businesses. Small non-farm businesses in 35 California counties, including those lining the Central Valley, and neighboring counties in Arizona and Nevada are eligible to apply for low-interest federal disaster loans from the U.S. Small Business Administration. These loans offset economic losses because of the reduced revenues caused by the drought that began on January 1, 2014. Eligibility for these loans is based on financial impact of the disaster, not property damage. The interest rate on the loan is 4% for businesses and 2.625% for private and nonprofit organizations with a maximum term of 30 years. Businesses primarily engaged in farming or ranching are not eligible for this particular SBA assistance. You may request an application available via email to disastercustomerservice at sba.gov. The deadline to apply is September 15, 2014. And for more information, you can visit SBA's disaster assistance programs at sba.gov forward slash disasters. Studies are showing that the new health care rules may be hitting mid-sized businesses the hardest. Mid-sized businesses, by definition, are those with 50 to 100 workers. The mandate for businesses with 50 or more employees to provide insurance to all full-time employees was delayed until 2015, but businesses are bracing for the impact of what they believe will be higher taxes and fees, increased health insurance premium for those employees that are covered, and challenges even with finding companies to provide insurance company to their employees. Kern County's real GDP recovered from the Great Recession, according to a report released last week by the National Association of Counties. Kern was the largest county in the Central Valley to show recovery, so that's great news for us here in Kern County. About half of the nation's 3,069 county economies are still short of their pre-recession economic output, reflecting the uneven economic recovery, according to that report. We're still in the middle of winter, but now is the perfect time to begin planning for summer vacations so that you as a manager can avoid the costly problem of unused vacation. A recent right management survey showed that nearly 70% of workers in North America do not plan to use their annual vacation. So, unless specified in a contract or other agreement, unused vacation can accrue into the following year, causing significant hits to the bottom line if you end up having to pay out an employee for that unused vacation when they leave your company. There is also an unintended consequence of employees not taking vacation, and that's in your productivity costs. Business owners and managers should encourage their employees to get away, take time off, take that vacation so that they can relax and come back re-energized. So start managing those vacations today so that you can avoid employee burnout or lack of energy, and also so that you can avoid those big payouts. The state small business loan program has received a boost in the form of $27 million from the U.S. Treasury. According to the Infrastructure and Economic Development Bank, California's small business owners will have even greater access to capital, which will allow them to expand their businesses and create jobs. The Treasury's allocation of additional funds is 
um, a good sign that it believes California is effectively managing its small business lending programs. This funding comes as part of the state small business credit initiative, which was created by the Small Business Jobs Act of 2010, signed into law by President Obama in 2010. Funded with $1.5 billion, the program is expected to spur up to $15 billion in new lending to small businesses and manufacturers as states use federal funds to leverage private investment dollars. These federal funds are available to state-run programs that work with private lenders to increase the credit available to small businesses with the aim of generating at least $10 in new private lending for every dollar in federal funding. Last week, the House Committee on Appropriations released the fiscal year 2014 omnibus spending bill, and in it was an additional $20 million requested by Valley Congressman David Valadeo to fight Wang Long Bing, commonly known as citrus greening. I had an opportunity to talk with the congressman while he was here uh, last week about this dreaded disease and what it means to the Central Valley. Here's what he had to say. Congressman Valadeo, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thanks for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. Oh, my pleasure. Citrus greening, it sounds pretty dreadful. Uh, what does it do to the citrus uh, crops and to the industry as a whole? Well, it damages the fruit. Mm -hmm. And uh, as far as for, the, uh, for humans, it doesn't affect us. But it damages the fruit, and mm -hmm. it basically makes it non-sellable. And uh, it had a huge impact in Florida. They lost uh, a good chunk of their crop wow. for five, six years, and it cost Ooh. them almost $5 billion. Oh, my goodness. So it's obviously something we're trying to make sure never makes it to California. We've got a huge industry here, and we want to make sure we protect that. Absolutely. Does it affect the, the taste of the fruit? Or it affects the way it looks. The, it's the looks, it's yeah. all surface greening because it doesn't mm -hmm. ripen correctly. It, it doesn't come in the right colors. It's, it's not formed correctly, it doesn't, and trees don't produce as much. So but that lowers the price overall? Well, it'll probably raise the price, but lower the output of the crop. At the output. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So at your request, $20 million in funding to fight this disease has been added to the 2014 omnibus spending bill. Yes. Um, what does this mean to the industry? Well, it's a one-time deal. Mm -hmm. And so basically USDA has formed this MAC, uh, 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 and I can't remember what the MAC stands for, but uh, it's a group of agencies, uh -huh. and this new MAC will be the center point of all the decision making okay. that has to do with, with citrus greening. So when they do their research, when they go to different uh, groups and, and study, it'll allow them to focus on making sure that we fight this disease. Uh, the Asian citrus psyllid is the, the vector that carries this. Uh -huh. We've seen some of those in the valley already, oh, so goodness. obviously we're concerned, and now this just helps us have the, the resources necessary to fight this disease so it never comes in here and does what it uh, did to Florida. And support for the citrus industry could not come at a better time. The prolonged freeze in December destroyed $424 million of citrus product and cost the industry within the San Joaquin Valley an additional $46 million in efforts to protect the 2013-2014 crop. So a big thank you to Congressman Valadeo for those extra dollars. The funds will be distributed by the Animal and Plant Health Inspection Services to support multi-agency research and continue to fight against citrus greening. You're watching Strictly Business. I'm Cindy Pollard with the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce. We're going to take a quick break for a word from our sponsors. And when we come back, we'll be visiting with Jeff Pickering to discuss the New Year's resolution for your business. Business exposure. Connections with other businesses. You want to make a difference in the community. Credibility of membership. Civic responsibility. Business advocacy. Leads generation. Various benefits and services. Seminars and workshops. Participate on chamber committees. And you can have it all with your membership in the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce. Introducing TBC Mobile from the Bakersfield, California. The most complete news, sports, weather, video, opinion, and lifestyle coverage in Bakersfield and Kern County. It's the easiest way to stay up to date on all things local while on the go. Read it on your smartphone or tablet. 
Download now by searching Bakersfield Californian in the Apple, Google, and Amazon app stores. In today's world, you need help protecting what's important. Whether your family, your home, your business, or even your assets, Young Wooldridge is your trusted partner and advocate. For more than 70 years, the attorneys at Young Wooldridge have worked steadily, tirelessly, and faithfully, whether you're building your business or rebuilding your life. The law offices at Young Wooldridge. Our lights are always on, so when you need us, we'll be there for you. This is Strictly Business, presented by the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce. Sponsored in part by the law offices of Young Wooldridge, San Joaquin Community Hospital, Hydrogen Energy California, and Chevron. And now here's your host, Cindy Pollard, President and CEO of the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce. Good morning and welcome back. Every year, nearly half of all Americans will make a New Year's resolution, most of them having to do with changes or improvements that we'll make in our personal lives. But what about your businesses? As business owners and managers, we want our businesses to thrive. And with a little bit of planning, you can be on your way. Last week, we took a look at developing a marketing plan for your business. <clears throat> Today, we're going to wrap up our series on New Year's resolutions with Jeff Pickering, President and CEO of the Kern Community Foundation, discussing the importance of corporate giving and give you some suggestions on how you can establish a, um, a program in your own company. Under Jeff's leadership, the Kern Community Foundation has $18 million in assets and annual grants of more than $1.5 million that help local donors organize and carry out plans for their charitable giving. Jeff has more than 18 years of professional experience in philanthropy as a grant maker, fundraiser, and nonprofit administrator. Good morning, Jeff. Hi, Welcome. Good morning. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Um, let's put some context around today's topic of corporate giving to start out. What does corporate giving look like in our country and then here specifically in our community? Great. Well, every year, Giving USA conducts a report about giving in America. And so, their latest report for 2012 showed that more than $300 billion was given away to charitable organizations in this country. Wow. Yeah, it's a lot of money. That is. Uh, most of that comes from you and I sitting down at our kitchen tables, uh, writing checks, going online, making credit card contributions, or in some cases, leaving plans for an estate gift, a bequest for an organization. So about 80% comes from people like you and I. About 5 to 6% in the United States mm -hmm. comes from corporations themselves wow. giving, not their employees, uh -huh. but their corporate uh, foundation or the corporation themselves making a donation to a charitable organization. So if you do the math, it's about $15 billion nationwide. And so if you think about here locally in Kern County, we've got about 1,000 charities across the county. Mm -hmm. 400 of them file a tax return, meaning that they take in more than $50,000 in revenue each year. Okay. And about $15 million or so goes to those organizations from corporations. Everything from large corporations, oil and ag companies, all the way down to the small mom and pop uh, business that's been around for a long time. Wow, that's impressive. Yep. Quite impressive. Many people believe that a corporation's number one priority should be uh, profits or value to shareholders. But um, in some of the information that I've been taking a look at, it looks like it's not business as usual anymore. Uh, in addition to paying attention to the bottom line, companies are now expected to help solve a community's most pressing either social or environmental challenges. Why is it important for companies to give back in terms of their own marketing presence and, and perspective that people have about them? Well, one of the things that I think we have to remember, and it's something that's been proven, is that giving is now good for business. It might have been something, for example, my grandparents' generation felt as an obligation to do, but now we've actually got academic studies and mm -hmm. other business-related studies that are published in respected publications all the way from the Wall Street Journal all the way down to the Bakersfield, Californian that say it is actually good mm -hmm. for business quantitatively. Edelman, for example, is one of the Com the, the United or the world's rather largest uh, public relations firms, and they published a study called Good Purpose, uh -huh. and they demonstrated that after surveying close to 8,000 customers worldwide, when it came to two products that were equal in price, the company's social reputation, their their commitment to giving back, was the leading factor for people choosing that product as their own. So it's something that we've seen proven out in the marketplace as well. A very strong message for. Uh 
corporations. Yeah, it's not something you can actually just turn away and say, oh, it's not important, or we'll, we'll get around to it when we finally have the time. It's actually got to be part of a triple bottom line strategy when you're running your business now. And that's for big companies as well as small companies, correct? It is for big companies. Some big companies have departments or divisions or even their own foundations that work in this space. But you don't need that. Small businesses that we work with or that we see across mm -hmm. the country are doing it just through simple acts of making a deliberate choice to give back and then being focused on that throughout the course of the year. Okay. So how does a company go about setting up and operating a corporate giving program or a charitable contributions program? One of the things to remember is that it's important to start where you're at. And so oftentimes, even if the company is not sponsoring an official corporate giving program, it's likely your employees are. Right. Uh, if you're a CEO of a company and it's been a while since you've been down to the cafeteria, just take a visit down there and talk to folks about what kinds of things that they're doing to give back. Mm -hmm. There may be actually charitable activities that they're doing. They could be raising money for a specific cause, right. or they could be just good things. A neighbor or an employee, a coworker, for example, um, maybe has been out sick for a long time and their kids need rides to and from practice. Right. So there are good things already happening. I think that's important to start where you're at. Acknowledge right. those things that are good, uh, things that are happening in your business where they're at. From a formal perspective, mm -hmm. I think it's really important for a business to think strategically about why do we want to get involved in giving back and what impact do we want it to have on a few areas of our business? Do we want it to impact our bottom line? Do we want it to increase profits by 1%? Do we want it to have an influence on more customers? Mm -hmm. um, how is it affecting our public image? And most importantly, what is it doing for us with respect to our relationships in the community? How is it affecting right. our public image and our connections as citizens in the community? Have a thoughtful conversation about those areas and then get busy with an inventory. Some of the businesses mm -hmm. that we work with actually go through the process of doing a formal inventory. We take a look oh. back, yeah, one, two, or three years previously and mm -hmm. ask, what did we give to? We make a long list. And then we say, okay, what do we care about? And what's interesting is sometimes they'll find that there are disparities and sometimes there are alignments. And that's where we get busy uh, helping those organizations out. Okay. So... Um it sounds like you're laying out a recipe that is not only um, effective for big companies, but for smaller companies as well. Um, what specific guidance would you give those who might be watching and thinking, I, you know, I don't know if I have the budget. I don't know if I have the time. I certainly don't think I can carve out enough money for a formal giving program. What advice would you give them? Well, there's a couple of ways that they can go about it. First and foremost, if, if giving back is important, I think one of the best national and here local resources that they can tap into is the United Way. United Way has got built-in employee giving programs where they have staff that will connect with you if you care about issues related to education, income, or health. If your business thinks right. that those are important, it's a great way to begin to jumpstart your giving program. Uh, for other companies that want to take a more formal approach to mm -hmm. doing something on their own, uh, I think even if you have paid staff, you can assign it to somebody and basically go through the effort of maybe setting up your own private foundation and working through that, or setting up a fund, whether it be through the community foundation or one of the charitable gift funds at Schwab or Fidelity, and using that as a vehicle to give back to the community. Okay. One of the things, of course, we know that Bakersfield is a very giving community, and we see it day in and day out with um, all of the support for the charitable nonprofits. And... I know one of the things that I see a lot of is employees within a particular company who are coaching their son or daughter's basketball team, football team, baseball team, um, and that's all a form of charitable giving uh, as well, especially when that company that uh, the coach works for will give $100, $250 maybe to buy uniforms. How can companies sort of get their arms around that type of giving and maybe help boost that? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think it's important to define the difference between good activities in our communities uh -huh. and charitable activities. Okay. And companies get engaged in both. Good activities are the kinds of things that you're talking about. Service, uh, maybe uh, in a sports league or those types mm -hmm. of things. Company dollars go towards buying uniforms, maybe paying for fields. Those are great things to encourage okay. goodwill among your corporate brand and your employees. From the charitable perspective, we typically say focus on organizations that have what they call a 501c3 status okay. and make sure that the charitable activities that they're carrying out relate to improving the health and well-being of our community in a variety of areas, okay. like improving the conditions of poverty, education, health care, mm -hmm. arts and culture, youth and after-school programs. Those are really areas 
that are truly charitable in our community where there is tremendous need. Okay. People can get involved either by incorporating their own volunteer programs within their businesses. There are some examples of that taking place here. Or just encouraging company employees to take time during the work week, four hours, let's say, a month, to begin to use uh, in service of an organization here in the community that they want to get involved in. Well, I know some companies will do, um, I know I used to work for PG&E, mm-hmm. and they had um, a matching component to uh, the employees giving. So, mm-hmm. you know, if I went out and volunteered at, say, you know, the Cancer Society or, you know, keep Bakersville clean, so many hours, there was a matching component to that. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's one way that um, employees or I guess companies can support their employees giving in the community as well? They can. They can. I think making it a formal uh, program within your company, just telling employees up front, here's we commit to you giving back to the community either dollars or time. Mm -hmm. And specifically here are the guidelines. We'll allow you a certain number of hours or in fact if you give dollars, we'll match up to a certain amount. We've got a couple of great examples here in the community. Roll Global and Paramount Uh give each employee a couple thousand here in Kern County up to $1,000 each to begin to spend to any charitable organization that they want to here in the community. Chevron does similar things with matching gifts where employees make a contribution and they submit a form and the company sends a check to that organization. Others are more creative in the way that they actually help their employees to give. Okay, and we'll be talking with uh, Adam Alvidrez a little bit uh, later in the show specifically about Chevron. But tell us, um, give us a couple of those other examples that you were talking about, maybe some of those more creative or different ways that uh, employ or that companies are encouraging their employees to get. Sure. Two organizations that I've been impressed with are, one's a larger uh, mm-hmm. oil uh, corporation here in town, Era Energy, uh-huh. has established uh, Team Era, which goes out and does volunteer service components and right. also does special projects. Uh, they helped uh, with uh, the Golden Empire Gleaners, for example, with them uh, to reorganize the way they do their food distribution uh-huh. warehouse here locally. They also have a fund here at Kern Community Foundation that happens to be at the foundation where they contribute large grants to support projects within the community. Those are grants that employees have suggested are important things for the company to invest in. Everything Uh from the West Side Recreation Area um, out in Taft, Mm -hmm. uh, new ball fields out there, the new ball fields here in Bakersfield, all the way down to uh, on Giving Day this last year, they granted out about $300 to uh, the three local hospital foundations to improve health care in our community. So those are what that's an example of what a big company does. Uh-huh. Uh, on the smaller end, uh, we've worked closely with a company called Lightspeed Systems. It's uh, okay. based ba- in here in Bakersfield. It's a high-tech company that's focused on digital education products, partnering with schools. And their tagline is, uh, we do amazing things. And so we help. And they do. <laughs> they do. They do. They're great. And so we help them set up a program called um, their Lightspeed Systems Foundation, where they award amazing grants, oh, amazing uh-huh. gifts, and amazing employee giving cards. And the amazing grants go to support digital education mm-hmm. projects. The gifts are for managers and executives to support local needs at a smaller level. And the cool thing that they do with the amazing employee giving cards is that they give each employee it's much like a retail gift card, uh-huh. a giving card with a certain amount of money on it. And that employee gets to spend it on any charitable organization that they want. And it's not just here in Bakersfield. They've got offices across the United States, mm-hmm. and so they can spend it anywhere. That's fantastic. And so it's giving their employees the chance to give back to the causes they care about. Right. Now, tell us a little bit more about the giving cards. I know that um, I have received a couple of those as gifts, which I've been able to turn around and gift to um local nonprofits. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit more about how those work and where people can get them. That's a great question. So in our work, we work across the spectrum of philanthropy and oftentimes Mm -hmm. talking with people about their estate gifts. um, That's a serious conversation that takes years to develop. We also want to encourage philanthropy here locally for people that might be giving for the first time. So the foundation, Kern Community Foundation, has developed a product. It's called the Charity Giving Card. And much like a retail gift card, you can go online to kernfoundation.org, and companies can buy them and brand them. Mm -hmm. They can spend any amount of money that they'd like. They get a tax deduction immediately, and then they give that to their employee, let's say, on the anniversary of their employment or they give it to a customer, you know, somebody that's been a loyal customer for years. It's a nice years. customer appreciation gift. Yeah, you maybe tack it on to a mm-hmm. bottle of wine or a bag of fruit. Great or, idea. Yeah, yeah, some <laughs> of those things. Uh, we were very busy around the holiday season doing a lot of that, customizing those orders. Okay. And then the recipient, the employee or the customer, uh, gets to go online and redeem that card, let's say for $100, mm-hmm. to any charity that they want to, any 501c3 in the country, including a place of worship 
or um, an alma mater. Uh, so if you graduated from a school back east or here from a local here university. here on the West Coast. Yep. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you could give it to any organization that you'd like. And we find that it's a great way to make giving easy and fun. And okay. it's something that's kind of catching fire with our, with our customers and donors that have never learned about the Community Foundation. Oh, that's fantastic. So if um, someone is looking for some tips on how to get started, I understand um, that your organization will come in and do an assessment. We will. It's probably the best way to actually get uh, the best use of your time. Within about 60 minutes, we can sit down with one or more knowledgeable team members within your company. If you're a large corporation, it might be somebody in your public affairs department. If you're a small business owner, you know perhaps you and maybe your manager, and talk with you about okay. the things that you're currently doing and ways that we could help uh, or other services in the community like the United Way or other giving programs might be able to help you with improving the way that you're running your corporate giving for your company. So if you contact us at kernfoundation.org, it's simple enough. We can schedule a very brief 60-minute consultation, and it helps you to get started. And uh, we've gotten feedback from people that have gone wow. through that process where they're really satisfied that they've gotten moving in the right direction. Fantastic. Jeff, thank you so much for being here today. A lot of great information. Thanks. Thank you for um, taking a look at New Year's resolutions. This one in particular, establishing some type of a corporate giving program for your company. It's not hard. Uh, it does take a little time. And Jeff Pickering over the Kern Community Foundation and his team can help you do that. I'm Cindy Pollard with the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce. You're watching Strictly Business. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll be visiting with uh, uh, Adam Alvidres from Chevron. Business exposure. Connections with other businesses. You want to make a difference in the community. Credibility of membership. Civic responsibility. Business advocacy. Leads generation. Various benefits and services. Seminars and workshops. Participate on chamber committees. And you can have it all with your membership in the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce. Kern Business Journal contains news and information from local business leaders and organizations. Topics include agriculture, health and medical, energy, real estate, and more. Visit kernbusinessjournal.com to find out how to subscribe or where to pick up a free copy. To inquire about advertising in the bi-monthly business journal, call 395-7586. Find us online on Facebook and Twitter, as well as on kernbusinessjournal.com. Hydrogen Energy California, a clean and reliable alternative energy solution, is proud to sponsor this program. Located in western Kern County, HECO will create thousands of construction jobs and at least 200 full-time positions. That translates into $52 million in annual labor income and at least $239 million in annual economic impact to Kern County. To learn more about HECO's commitment to the vitality of our business community, visit hydrogenenergycalifornia.com. This is Strictly Business, presented by the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce. Sponsored in part by the Law Offices of Young Wooldridge, San Joaquin Community Hospital, Hydrogen Energy California, and Chevron. And now here's your host, Cindy Pollard, President and CEO of the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce. Welcome back, and thanks for joining us. This Spotlight on Business is brought to you by Chevron. We're joined today by Adam Alvidres, who's been a longtime friend of mine, and he's a community engagement specialist with Chevron. Good morning, Adam. Good morning. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. So uh, Chevron is a model organization when it comes to corporate social responsibility, giving back to the community, and really being a part of the community. How do you all define corporate responsibility, or what do you see as your corporate responsibility, and why is it important to the company? Sure. Thank you, Cindy. Well, you've heard earlier about philanthropy, and mm -hmm. that's changed for us a little bit. Uh, we, oh. we, we tend to look at them as social investments. Uh, not okay. to say that philanthropy is a bad thing. Uh -huh. uh, we definitely appreciate that folks like the Current Community Foundation, other mm -hmm. development folks in the world who really help companies become more strategic in their giving. So 
Um, that's much needed, and we appreciate all the efforts throughout the community. Social investments uh, Chevron, for Chevron, uh, we take it a different approach. We want to be more engaged. It's not just a, a check. We're not just writing a check, although mm-hmm. I have been seen holding up big checks before. <laughs> big checks are important. <laughs> um, so we take it a step further. We want our employees engaged. We want them to be aligned with what we're doing. Um, in this case, education is really important for our employees uh-huh. and for the company. Um, we want to look out for California's workforce, and one way to do that is by investing in education locally mm-hmm. where we operate uh, and uh, throughout other areas where we have um, operations. So you talk about, um, you know, it's more than just the big check. So your engineers and other employees actually go into classrooms or hands-on participation with some of those programs? That's correct. We have mentoring strategies. We have, uh, on February 1st, we have some of our engineers and techies judging a robotics competition. Oh, those are cool. So, I mean, we're able to have, give the opportunities for our employees to really see the value in our social investments to realize why we're investing in education, in this case, science, technology, engineering, and math education. Okay. Um, you have a commercial that's airing right now, and it actually airs on this program as well. And I, it um, has side-by-side pictures of one of your engineers and then of a student who is talking about all of the great things that he's learning. And, you know, their conversation almost mirrors one another, and you see it from the adult working perspective, and then you see it from the cool perspective of this kid that's learning to do all sorts of neat things. And um, to me, that sums up what it is that you all are doing in the classroom. Right. That's Winston Seiler is a great one of our earth scientists, and uh, he's still volunteering. He's still going in classrooms and helping kids out. So it's definitely, uh, it, it helps us when we're able to have employees involved in those areas. That's great. So what impact um, are you guys seeing your corporate social responsibility uh, having on the company, on your employees and the public in general? Sure. Well, uh, I'll take science, technology, engineering, and math for for, uh, an example. Uh, We're investing in a partnership called Project Lead the Way, which is a a nonprofit organization. They developed a rigorous uh, STEM curriculum for kids. It's basically engineering for middle school and high school kids. Oh, okay. So a really neat program. We started that about four years ago. Um, we've grown it, and uh, it's all anecdotal evidence, basically. Uh-huh. So uh, our first cohort from Centennial High, we follow these kids from freshman to senior. They're all going to colleges and universities, uh, pursuing STEM-type um, career paths. That's fantastic. Um, and when we hear about stories from um, students from Bakersfield High School, for example, who didn't know what they wanted to do, they're seniors now, they're getting accepted to Cal Poly Pomona, they're getting accepted to San Francisco State University. So being able to connect the dots and tell the story. It means a lot to Chevron. And I'm not an economist, but you know, <laughs> we can confidently say we're, we're making an impact. We're making a difference. That's fantastic. You know, there was a survey conducted last year by Cone Communications on social responsibility. And they showed that um, 31% of the respondents believe that businesses, businesses should change the way they operate to align with greater social and environmental needs. How is Chevron changing the way it operates based on what you all have identified are the, those social or environmental needs? Our long-term strategies are to basically invest in education throughout the United States. Uh, okay. STEM education is really important to us. However, we also like to get employees involved, like I mentioned before. Mm-hmm. Um, last year, our employees volunteered well over 6,000 hours of community service. That's a lot for, of time. For things that they care about. Um, you, so it really depends on what the employees care about every now and then when they're able to connect the dots and, and mm-hmm. leverage our social investments. Um, it it means a lot to us. We're able to tell that story. So um, I think we're more focused uh, regionally. Uh, throughout California, we're uh-huh. investing in education. And throughout the other areas where we have operations, STEM education will be really important to us for the, uh, for the future. Right. Well, you know, you're investing in the education, and it's helping these students to find, you know, maybe find their way, establish career goals and career paths, and figure out how to get there. Um, I think what's particularly significant about that is that you're also helping to create a better educated workforce, which, of course, we know is definitely a need here. And um, we're hoping that those students will either stay here in Bakersfield or go away, get their education, and come back. So, you know, not only are you helping to boost education, but uh, growing and growing a smarter workforce as well. Um, does Chevron ever partner with other companies in the community to develop programs? Um, absolutely. I'll give an example of that. We have okay. a, a friendly competition in the summer with gleaners. It's called Oil Can Do It. So uh-huh. basically our employees uh, 
Chevron employees team will will come together. We'll we'll re- try to raise you know money for food or get right. canned goods. Uh, other areas that we do that is you know things like Relay for Life, uh, supporting healthcare causes, things like that. Uh-huh. So any chance that we can you know stretch the social investment and get other companies on board. Um, yeah, we are competitive, but at the end no. of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, we want to make a difference. And having other partners and companies step up to the plate really makes um, just stretch the dollar. We appreciate everything they do. So. That's great. Now, um, you talked about education. You talked about science, technology, and engineering and math um, specifically. What are some of uh, your other funding focus areas that where you look to make a difference in the community? Education is one of them. We also uh, invest in economic development and health right mm-hmm. here in uh, local areas. Um, we've supported San Joaquin Community Hospital. We have a, number, a couple of programs there. And so we tend to, in terms of our pie chart, for example, uh-huh. um, education, STEM education is most of our pie chart. We also tend to invest in economic uh, development and health and basically getting our employees involved and help us um, support those needs as well. Okay. And what advice would you give other companies that are looking to become more socially responsible? Um, how can they set up a program of their own? I think planning is really important for any mm-hmm. companies, small or big. You know, having objectives that strategically align with their business plans. Right. Uh, having employees uh, have a, a say in that. You know, having some governance structure, some uh, employee dialogue definitely helps. Mm-hmm. Um, without employees, I mean, they're, they're our number one ambassador. So without them, um, we really don't have a, a, a strong social investment program. Right. So they're definitely... Um, I would say they, they plan, definitely include their employees, their okay. voices, um, and let them kind of help you guide what you're doing. Okay. And does Chevron's giving program look the same throughout the United States, or is it something that you tailor from community to community? Um, it tends to, based on where areas where we operate, it does tend to uh, depend on the community, uh, what the stakeholders feel are more important. Uh, locally, education is important to our stakeholders, so that may vary okay. uh, business unit to business unit. And we're a global company, so you'll see um, global health initiatives okay. in some other, in some other, um, certain parts of the the world. Whereas, you know, we're focused on education. You may see other health issues that come up. Okay. Um, so it really depends on um, the area. But in terms of a United States approach to uh, invest in education, STEM education is one of the core themes that we're looking at. Okay, what are um, What's one of the programs that you're most proud about? I would say, wow. Um, <laughs> Put you on the spot. I know there okay. are so many no, that, that you there's do. So many, there's so many great partners out there. You know, mm-hmm. Project Lead the Way is one of them. Donors Choose, which is an online charity for educators that helps teachers get resources. Tell us about that one. Uh, sure. Uh, we started this about uh, four years ago. Uh-huh. Uh, Donors Choose is an online charity that allows teachers to get gear you know equipment supplies mm-hmm. for their kids which so is always difficult always many of them it. are paying out of their own pocket right. for they spend, school supplies absolutely right. they spend anywhere from you know 500 up to sometimes 5,000 bucks for material so wow. we looked at them and thanks to the Kern County Superintendent of Schools who helped us get the word out uh-huh. um, so we were able to uh, reach students help them get materials and supplies uh, we've invested a million bucks since we started reached thousands of students and have helped support a number of science projects okay. classroom materials um, and, and institutions of higher education is really important. Uh-huh. BC, Tap College, Cal State, they're all on they're on the same boat, and they definitely want to make a difference in those areas, uh-huh. get students ready for the workforce. So they're definitely a proud partner that we're, we we um, support. So I guess the short answer is we do a lot of cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of cool stuff, and you're proud of a lot of them, and it's hard to pick just one. Right. But a lot of great things here in the community. So um, looking at where you are now and some of the programs that you're currently running, what's next for Chevron in terms of its um, corporate giving or social responsibility? You'll see more STEM education. Okay. You'll see a very neat program happening at Cal State. I can't tell you what it is. Oh, You'll Adam. You'll have to look for the media alert on that. When, when, when can um, we expect to see something on probably that? Probably in a couple months. Okay. First well, time it's happened for Cal State. It's an MIT product. Um, that's all I'll say for now. Okay, we'll have you back to talk about it. So really exciting. Uh, okay. You'll see more. You'll see the expansion of Project Lead the Way Engineering to middle schools. We're adding 13 middle schools this year. Wow. And that's thanks to you know a local school district. Mm-hmm. Um, they're exploring it. They're using 
um, tech labs and basically reinvigorating teachers and students. So that's exciting. You'll see more STEM education and economic development projects. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, it's you. been great talking to you. Uh, as you said, Chevron is doing a lot of cool things, really cool things. So you get a chance to play in a lot of those cool things, huh? Good deal. You're listening, watching Strictly Business. I'm Cindy Pollard with the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce. We're going to take a break. Word from our sponsors. When we come back, we'll be taking a look at the closing bell with programs, events, activities, good for business. Business exposure. Connections with other businesses. You want to make a difference in the community. Credibility of membership. Civic responsibility. Business advocacy. Leads generation. Various benefits and services. Seminars and workshops. Participate on chamber committees. And you can have it all with your membership in the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce. Introducing TBC Mobile from the Bakersfield, California. The most complete news, sports, weather, video, opinion, and lifestyle coverage in Bakersfield and Kern County. It's the easiest way to stay up to date on all things local while on the go. Read it on your smartphone or tablet. Download now by searching Bakersfield Californian in the Apple, Google, and Amazon app stores. This is an RC robotic claw. A high school science teacher made me what I am today. Our science teacher helped us build it. Now I'm a geologist at Chevron, and I get to help science teachers. It has four servo motors and a wireless microcontroller. Over the last three years, we've put nearly $100 million into American education. That's thousands of kids learning to love science. Isn't that That's cool? That's pretty cool. This is Strictly Business, presented by the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce. Sponsored in part by the Law Offices of Young Wooldridge, San Joaquin Community Hospital, Hydrogen Energy California, and Chevron. And now here's your host, Cindy Pollard, President and CEO of the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce. Welcome back. We are at the closing bell. Information for you. The University of Laverne is hosting a water technology conference Thursday, January 30th from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Abraham Campus Center in the city of Laverne. The conference fee is $75. For more information or to RSVP, you can log on to laverne.edu forward slash water conference 2014. The Bakersfield Downtown Business Association is hosting a tap and run event Saturday, February 1st. The cost is $60. The DBA is seeking volunteers to help work the event. So if you're interested in helping out, please call Melanie at 661-325-5892. For more information on the event or to register to run or crawl, log on to tapandrun.com. The Bakersfield Association of Realtors is extending an offer for preventive health screenings to members of the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce on Monday, February 3rd from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at its offices located at 2300 Bahamas Drive in Bakersfield. The cost of the screenings vary by the type of screening provided. For more information or to schedule an appointment, call Precision Ultrasound at 877 484 Seven three two four. The Taft Chamber of Commerce is hosting Hollywood Nights, this year's annual installation party. That's taking place Thursday, February 6th, 6 o'clock in the evening at the Fox Theater out in Taft. Tickets for the event are $40 each. For more information, contact Shannon Jones at the Taft Chamber at 661-765-2165. Six, five. And as a reminder, the uh, Business Matchmaking and Union Bank of California are hosting the Small Business Forum on Cybercrime. That's taking place January 30th from 
10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. out at Cal State University Bakersfield. Um, presentations and materials will be provided by uh, federal, state, and local law enforcement, SBA, as well as Union Bank and the California T Attorney General's Office. They'll be providing a briefing on how small business and educational institutions can best avoid being victimized by cyber criminals. Uh, this program is being offered for chambers of commerce, professional organizations, healthcare, legal construction companies, engineering and retail firms, as well as colleges and universities. You can RSVP at bakersfield at businessmatchmaking.com. And uh, you won't want to miss that, especially with all of the cybercrime that seems to be hitting. There is another retail outlet just announced today that they believe that they have been the um, victims of cybercrime. So you're going to want to find out what you can do to protect your business. The Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce has a couple of upcoming events. For more on those, here is Lauren Smoot, our Manager of Marketing and Communications at the Chamber News Desk. What do you have, Lauren? I have a couple things this week. At the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce, we recognize new expanding and or relocating businesses with ribbon cutting ceremonies. Along with local dignitaries and ambassadors, we will be celebrating two ribbon cuttings this week. And those are Dress for Success, Bakersfield. Tuesday, January 28th at 10 a.m. It's located downtown on 17th Street, right near Eurekios. Also this week, we have Vision Essentials by Kaiser Permanente, a ribbon cutting that's happening on Thursday, January 30th at 11 a.m. This is at the Marketplace, right next to Ulta Beauty and Supply. Vision Essentials is a new business that has come to Bakersfield um, on behalf of Kaiser Permanente. That's a great addition to the Marketplace. A great chamber event happening this week, and there's still room to sign up, is Social Media Therapy. It's being held Wednesday, January 29th from noon to 1 p.m. You're going to want to join the Social Media Therapy session if you are a manager or employer that is interested in knowing all about social media and the policies that need to be associated with business. If you're interested in the hiring practices and how to use social media to do those, if it's allowed or not, then go ahead and sign up with us, $30 for chamber members and $60 for non-members. Call the chamber, 327-4421, or visit our website to sign up now. And I am finished, headed back to Cindy. Now I know uh, coming up soon, I believe uh, this Saturday, uh, February 1st, we will begin accepting nominations for Beautiful Bakersfield. Yes, we will. And we're going to go more in depth on that next Monday. But Beautiful Bakersfield nominations begin February 1st. And it will be online on our website, www.bakersfieldchamber.org. And starting Monday, you can go ahead and pick up the nominations at the Chamber office if you're interested. Thanks, Lauren. And if you're not familiar with the Chamber's Beautiful Bakersfield program, it is an incredible event that every year celebrates the people, the individuals, and the organizations that are making a difference in the quality of life here in Bakersfield. And it is just an incredibly heartwarming event. Last year, we sold out the event at 500 individuals, uh, celebrating an Academy Award-style awards night that was truly inspirational and uplifting. So if you know people who have made an impact on the quality of life here in Bakersfield over the 2013 year, please take the time to nominate them so that we can recognize their efforts. The uh, Downtown Business Association is hosting its annual State of the Downtown Breakfast on Thursday, February 13th, 7.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. at the Marriott at the Convention Center in downtown Bakersfield. The cost is $40 for DBA members, $50 for non-members. Call 325-5892 to RSVP, and they're asking that you RSVP before Friday, February 7th. And tis the season for installation dinners. The Kern County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce is hosting its annual installation uh, dinner and business awards um, celebration this Saturday. 
February 1st from 6 to 11 p.m. at the Marriott at the Convention Center. Joining me here in studio is Blagi Rodriguez, the incoming chairman of the board or chairperson of the board for the Kern County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Good morning. Good morning. How are, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. So big, excited to be here. Oh, we're excited to have you. And you've got a big event coming up uh, this Saturday. We do. What it's, can we expect at the installation dinner? Um, you can expect us to recognize some very valuable people in our community. Dr. Or Mayor Hall will be receiving the Businessman of the Year Award. He's as, a great guy. Isn't he? He We're is. We're very fortunate to have him as our mayor. Um, Sandra Serrano will be recognized this year as our business person of businesswoman of the year, I'm sorry. And La Rosa Fruit Bars will be recognized as small business as well as CNA Motors as large business. In addition to, we have our rec our corporation recognition for Wells Fargo Bank uh -huh. and Community Service Award will be going to Karen Go. Oh, fantastic. So we're really excited to be able to recognize and honor them this year. And you really do know how to party. Um, <laughs> yeah. I attended last year's event. Great evening, a lot Thank of fun, you. high energy, great food, great music and dancing. And the same this year. Okay. We'll be having Mento Buru this year. Oh, They'll okay. be performing for um, the dance and the menu I got to hand select. So it was. it's going to be good food, too. Uh, Not to disappoint. In. Well, let me in on uh, what I'll be eating. You know what? They serve at the Marriott magnificent sweet potato mash, sweet mashed potatoes. Ooh. And I'm not a sweet potato girl, but these are incredible. You've never had my mom's sweet potatoes then. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> we'll have to see if I can bring you some, especially Please in do. a pie. <laughs> uh, even better. <laughs> that is my favorite. <laughs> so uh, the cost to attend uh, the installation dinner? Are tickets still available tickets first? Tickets are still available. Okay. We are beginning to sell out okay. or oversell, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh-huh. You always end up with a few no-shows at the end. You exactly. Know. Okay. Exactly. Um, the Cost? tables are 700 okay. and okay. or f individual $75. Oh, okay. That's yeah. terrific. And to RSVP, um, you can do so by calling the Hispanic Chamber at 661-633-5495. That's right. So I guess I will put on my dancing shoes Please. And I'll it's see you at the Marriott. Magnificent. The music's going to be great. Well, good deal. Thank, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. You have a wonderful week. Okay. Thank you. And the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce held its installation dinner last Thursday, and it was an incredible night. Lots of laughs, lots of great networking. We had 400 people uh, in attendance at the event that saw our incoming chairman of the board, who is Danny Ordiz with Ordiz Melby Architects, do somewhat of a roast to the outgoing uh, chairman of the board, Garrett Ming, who is the uh, president and CEO of KABI LLC, a new company that he just formed. And um, it was just an all-out fantastic evening. So I'm going to wrap up the show, leave you with some of the sights and sounds. But before that, if you have story ideas um, or suggestions for our Strictly Business program, we want to hear from you. Send those to us at production at bakersfieldchamber.org. You have been watching Strictly Business. I'm Cindy Pollard with the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce. We'll see you right back here next Monday at 10. In the meantime, enjoy some of the sights and sounds from the Greater Bakersfield here, Chamber of Commerce. We're going to take a look ahead at some of the exciting things that are on tap for this year and where we celebrate and recognize the chamber leadership. We do have a couple of board members that we will be saying farewell to. Citizens decided to join the chamber because of the amazing networking opportunities and all of the um, the valuable committees that it has, like the Government Review Committee or Leadership Bakersfield, and just has a lot of programs that I feel that we could benefit from. Oh, well, I'm excited about working with all the staff. They're wonderful people, 
and um, I think some of the new programs that are coming up, I'm excited about that. Yeah, the, the, the young generation professionals, that's going to be fun. Chamber is important for every business in Bakersfield because it builds a synergy, builds a bond, and let's face it, Bakersfield is the greatest city in the world, and that's why we all work together. So, Esther, are you out there? Here you are. Thank you so much for being here this evening.